this is where those sectors of reality open up to us. Hello, 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 Transurfer and the Transurfing Curious. My name is Renee Garcia, guys, and this is Transurfing TV. <laughs> and today on Transurfing TV, I'm going to dive into part three of our little series on the alternative space. This book is like, I don't even know how to describe my relationship with this book. It is very peculiar and it's a very interesting relationship with the book because, um, you know, it's, I've, I've got a lot of history with it, right? I've got a lot of history with it. There was a time when I didn't know where the book had really come from or was, you know, challenged to understand everything in the book. And then obviously like, becoming partners with Vadim Zeeland, going into the book in depth to the extent where I felt as though I knew every little nuance and crevice of the book. And then of course, like the falling out with Vadim, but I still have the book everywhere, right? Me having to learn how to like separate my relationship with, um, you know, separate, the two different parts of transurfing for me, my relationship with Vadim and then my relationship with the book. And when Vadim and I first separated, I was like, oh my God, what am I gonna do? I have all these books all over and blah, blah. And I was, and then I thought, you know what? You continue on loving that book. It doesn't matter what's happened with Vadim. Like your relationship with the book is your relationship with the book. But it is, very entertaining for me at times still to like, you know, in the evening when I don't feel like watching any TV, I'll take a shower and I'll get into bed and I'll do my little night routine and settle in and I read the book for a while. And sometimes I will open the book and be like, okay, what the hell? I do not remember this part of the book. And this is mind blowing to me that I can, feel as though I've got such a grasp on the entire thing, yet at moments I'll open it and feel like I'm reading it for the first time. It's kind of like the Bible, you know? It's, and it's, really what, do I, what I equate this to is my consciousness has changed. My, uh, I, I'm evolving, therefore I'm seeing information differently Maybe, and I'll be the first to admit, there was times that I read things in the book and I didn't necessarily understand what he was saying. And now I can read it and it's very clear to me what he's saying. So as I am evolving as a person, I'm able to connect with the book in different ways, sometimes more meaningful ways. And in this series, The Alternative Space, I was going off of the beginning of the book where the majority of the information is about the alternative space. And I thought, you know what, I'm gonna look throughout the book and see where there's other information about the alternative space. And sure enough, I turned to this page 314, a window onto the alternative space. And I'm like, wait a second, I don't remember this. <laughs> So I start reading it a little bit and I'm like, I don't remember any of this stuff. So I decided that I was going to stop and I'm actually going to read it with you guys and then give a little breakdown after, you know, after I read however far I feel like reading and incorporate it into our alternative space series. So before I do that, Please remember to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and comment below or question if you have any questions. And join us on the Facebook group, the International Transurfing Institute Facebook group. Actually, it's very funny. I was doing a podcast the other day and uh, I, I looked down and I realized one of the diamonds had fallen out of my bracelet. And I was like going nuts for about half an hour looking for it. There's like this really heavy carpet in my studio here. And I just stopped myself. I was like, just stop. You don't need to do this. You're not gonna find the diamond in this state of being, right? You can't solve the problem in the same state where the problem was created. So I was like, drop it. Don't 
give any more energy to this the diamond will present itself to you when <laughs> like when you're not in that state of being anymore and sure enough as i'm doing this video i glance down and i can see the diamond right and i would never have looked there so i this is this is um simple solutions to complex problems in action you guys <laughs> Oh, isn't it so awesome? So course is below. Join us on the Facebook group. Follow me on TikTok, Instagram, all that jazz. And I will get into it. A window onto the alternative space. People always have controlled and uncontrolled thoughts running through their mind. Some people refer to this as the inner dialogue, but in essence, it's not a dialogue, because, but a monologue because the mind really has no one else to chat to aside from itself. The heart is not capable of thinking and talking. It only feels and knows. The inner dialogue is loud in comparison to the silent sensations of the heart, and so intuition manifests itself very rarely and is barely noticeable. Some people believe that if you can quiet the inner monologue, the mind will give you access to intuitive information. This is true, but it is not possible to switch the monologue off totally when you are in a conscious state. Imagine that you have concentrated on being still and have managed to relax the flow of thoughts and words. You may have no apparent thoughts experiencing the emptiness within, but this does not mean that the monologue has been silenced. The mind is not asleep, quite the opposite in fact. It is very alert because its task has changed. It must not think or chatter. It is as if the mind is saying, okay, I'll be quiet. We'll see how you get along without me. That the monologue appears to have been silenced is an illusion. The inner monologue can only be truly quieted when the mind relinquishes its control or at least relaxes its vigilance. When the monologue only appears to have been stopped, the mind is still on the lookout and you could say drowns out the feelings of the heart even more with its very deafening silence. When the mind really surrenders its control, your perception falls into the alternative space. The inner monologue is only truly muted when you are sleeping or experiencing deep meditation. This only, this only has any practical benefit if a person practices lucid dreaming or deep meditation in which a state of consciousness is maintained. Lucid dreaming can be used as an experimental way of training the skill of outer intention. But what about in waking? Can you silence your inner dialogue when you are in a conscious state? Fortunately, there is a loophole. In the moments when the mind gives some slack on its control, a narrow window spontaneously opens and through it, the intuitive feelings of the heart erupt into consciousness. Oh my God, it's so good. <laughs> Intuition is felt as a vague presage, also called the inner voice. In moments when the mind is distracted, it is easy to intuit the feelings and knowledge of the heart to hear the rustle of the morning stars, the voice without words, meditation without thought, and sound without volume. In these moments, you begin to get a sense of something, but it still has an elusive quality to it. Do not think, feel intuitively. Everyone has experienced a thing we call in intuition at some time or another in their life. For example, you get the feeling that someone is about to arrive. You sense that something is about to happen. You have an unconscious urge to do something or realize that there is something you must know. You just know. In the game of thinking, the referee is the mind's analytical apparatus. The mind quickly sorts any data it receives onto shelves reserved for different signs to make everything logical or rational. Silencing the inner dialogue is like confiscating the referee's whistle and making him sit out of the game on the, re on the reserve's bench. The mind continues to observe but is incapable of controlling the game. The mind 
occasionally take short breaks from juggling data as, it, it, as if for a brief moment sitting down on the bench for a rest. During these breaks, the window opens to intuitive information. In these moments, you fall asleep. This may be news to you, but this really is how it all works. Everyone falls asleep during the day several times. It is just that they are not aware of doing it because the window is open for a very brief instant. The dozing mind wakes up and continues with its monologue. Sometimes an impression of what was glimpsed through the window reaches the conscious mind in the form of intuitive information, but more often than not, the mind pays no attention to these brief visions because it is so engrossed in its own thoughts. In sleep, the soul can travel anywhere and flies about purposely, purposelessly, but when the window opens during waking, the heart specifically sees the sector of the alternative space that backgrounds the mind's current thoughts. The soul's gaze is directed towards the corresponding sector of the alternative space, where it sees knowledge related to the mind's current thought content. As soon as the window opens, this knowledge breaks through to consciousness. If on waking, the mind pays attention to the impressions of the soul, i.e. remembers the short burst that took place during sleep, it will receive what is called intuitive knowledge, information that comes as if from nowhere, as if pulled out of a hat. Okay, so I'm gonna actually stop there because I'm gaining a lot of insights of what I can speak to on what we just went over. I have to say that getting back to my very first video on this subject, day one, if you didn't catch that one, go back and take a look. So what I was talking about in that video is how there's like a two-way action that occurs when you develop a more, a more profound and meaningful relationship with the alternative space. On one hand, you are open to higher variations. You're open to possibilities, opportunities, new information, new theories, right? The four steps of manifestation acknowledging that the variation of reality that you have, um, you know, that, that you are intending does in fact exist. And then the three next steps corresponding your thoughts, your action and your frequency to that variation helps to make it, to, to materialize it, right? So, here and then in in turn when you're tuning in to the alternative space and all of the different aspects of these infinite this infinite variety of variations that we have access to you're tuning out of that one that may be keeping you lower and down right so this is a challenge for the people that Vadim just talked about, like the, the ones that are running their mind all the time, right? And there's just these very, very brief moments where something can come through. And even if something does make its way through, the mind quickly goes to like either just discard it or that won't work or the mind wants to make certain that it remains in control. So this is where transurfing becomes kind of miraculous and where the, where the idea and the concept of outer intention really becomes the catalyst for improving your layer of reality so you can have a higher and better experience of it, getting more of what it is that you want. It's developing that relationship. It's recognizing when outer intention is bringing you something, even if it's just an idea, and going about it in a way so you can actually make that experience or that information useful and use it 
use it so you can benefit in your layer of reality. I did a video quite a while back called Harvesting Outer Intention. And this is kind of what I'm talking about in this video. It's that window to the alternative space opening. And again, the chatter of the mind is, the chatter of the mind is the main, is, is, is the main villain in this, in this scenario, not allowing any information to, to come through. And as trans servers, we're not really big into meditation, right? That's not really a, a, a big part of, of the trans surfing modality. There are some meditations that the Deem Zealand came up with, but I like to refer to them as active meditations. There's an actual intention there rather than just quieting your minds, right? You're actually doing something. You're sending energy out into the world. You're magnetizing to yourself more of what you want, all that kind of stuff. And you don't necessarily have to meditate to like get the chatter of the mind to quiet down to the extent that information can come in. The way that I did it personally is I grew the voice of my heart so it overpowered that chattering of the mind. My heart is pretty much driving everything at this point. My mind get in, gets involved in the logic, right? It gets involved in the business side of it. But my, but my heart is, is the one that is sort of navigating the whole thing. And with a heart that is tuned, you know, me tuning into the voice of my heart, my soul frail, this is that window opening and staying open more so than that other version of reality where my mind was doing that chatter, my heart wasn't listened to. Again, if something did break through that window, come through that window, the mind went very quickly to like negate it or to shut the heart down if the heart said, oh wait, that might be for me, right? So, so, if you're challenged to have what it is that you want today and you're like thinking, well, I got to quiet my mind, do it from a transferring perspective. Don't think about what isn't working. Don't think about what you don't like. Oh, my mind's too loud. I, I don't have that window open in the alternative space for very long for me to gain some higher insights. So I can discover new paths that could possibly lead to my goal, my intention, a higher version of reality. Start working on listening to the voice of your heart, tuning to your soul frail, and then harvesting outer intention as it comes to you, right? Like as something comes to you, it's, it's, a, it's a practice. It's not gonna just, you're gonna just wake up one day and like all of a sudden that window's open, information's coming in and you're gonna know exactly what to do with it. It's gonna stay open and the mind's gonna be quiet. It's all, it's all a practice. So the next time something does come through, don't discard it, tune into it and actually see whatever that thing is, see it through to the end or expand on it or roll with it a while. So let's say that, you know, maybe watching this video, I don't know, maybe let's say you, you, you suddenly have an insight to like do your own, your own channel. Don't just shut that out. This is where those sectors of reality open up to us is when whatever information is coming through, we roll on it, right? We don't just go, oh, never mind, and close the window. Um, in some of my past videos, I've said that doing that sort of thing is like hanging a sign out on your front door saying opportunities not welcome, right? This is, and, 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 and when you get into the habit of doing that, you train your heart to be quiet right? You keep telling your heart, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. And then finally the heart's like, 
okay, whatever. I'm just going to shut up now. I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to respond to any, any information anymore. And in my opinion, this is, this is what happens when a person experiences a midlife crisis. They, the heart makes one last attempt to be heard because it's been told to shut up for so long. And oftentimes, you know, it materializes, that voice of the heart materializes in sometimes childish ways. The, the classic example is like, you know, the dude going through the midlife crisis that's bored with his life and his, you know, 2.5 kids and his nine to five job. So he goes out and buys a yellow sports car, right? Because the heart's like, I want the yellow sports car. I want the yellow sports car. You don't have to let it get to that point. You don't have to let it get to that point. So I did a video. Um, I can't remember the name of it exactly. It wasn't that long ago, maybe a couple months. It was about it was about listening to the alternative space more. And I'm talking about it more specifically um, at night, like opening yourself up to asking questions of the alternative space and receiving information and insights and maybe not asking questions, maybe just laying there and sort of relaxing your mind again, not necessarily meditating, but just getting yourself to a place where you're like, okay, the alternative space is legit. And I'm just going to lay here and see what comes through and be kind of open to receiving some data, right? That may, that may be of use to you to solve a challenge, to find a new direction, to, you know, gain some insights on next steps you need to take with something that you want to do and making certain that you're not in the habit of just closing that window, closing that window, closing that window, closing that window. Try to foster a relationship where that window is staying open longer and longer. And again, this could be meditation. This could be um, you just relaxing at night in a hot bath in bed. This could be you driving in your car and saying, you know what, I'm going to have a little chat with the alternative space. See what comes through. As soon as you do that, you'll be amazed. Insights flow through that motherfucker. <laughs> Like crazy, once you have decided that you're going to have that relationship and you're going to, you're going to let that stuff come through. That's all I'm doing now. Everything that I've accomplished, everything that I have, goals being realized, this way that I live my life, all of everything, my material, my reality of my dreams materializing for me is a product of me naturally tuning out of the mind because the heart and the soul frail are listened to more, the rustle of the morning stars, letting information come through and harvesting it then. This is the main thing is once you get that coming through, don't let your mind go to work at tearing it down, right? Then you move on it. There is a guy that I like to follow on Instagram. Uh, he's a billionaire and he has a company. They had a company that he sold, his first company he sold for a billion dollars. And he does this thing that he calls um, Thinkitate. And it's like meditating, but what he does is he meditates, he gets himself into that state of, of relaxation, meditation, deep meditation. He's got a pencil and paper next to him for when he comes out of it, he just starts writing things down like crazy. And when I heard him say this, I was like, oh, he's, uh, he's just communicating with the alternative space. He's quitting that thing that the mind does to the extent that insights, information, data, you know, all that stuff can come through. And then he's making certain that he's in a state of being able to, you know, comprehend, write it down, remember all that kind of stuff and use that. So harvesting what data is coming through the window via outer intention and harvesting that. And that is where, that's where the success is right? In the harvest of that stuff. 
So wow, uh, I was actually a little bit nervous to do this video because um, I was I was thinking that when I read that I wouldn't be able to comprehend the knowledge myself and then give my two cents on it afterwards in a way that would actually make sense to you guys. <laughs> but I think that I kind of nailed it. So a little pat on my back. <laughs> I did it. Yay. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's a little bit longer, but kind of juicy. And I'm curious to hear your thoughts on it. And any questions, question them below. Let's have a conversation in the Facebook group if you, if you want to do that. And I will see you all next time. Have a good day, everybody. Bye.